can just follow this basic pattern, then land, water, wildlife, and agriculture can be harmonious. One thing that is absolutely wrecking ecosystems around this planet is the way that people manage land without any regard to the natural patterns of water flow and ecological continuity. We divide the land into squares and rectangles and encourage anyone to do whatever they want within their little box of private ownership. But these lines of ownership and control really have nothing to do with how nature functions. So land is managed within these boxes without considering the connection to the greater whole. So what does an actual sane land use pattern look like? There are many great examples, especially when we look at traditional land management by indigenous peoples all around the world that is sustained for millennia while improving the environment, like the Ahupua'a system in Hawaii, where the land is managed from the tops of the mountains to the ocean as one contiguous unit. So managing the land from the top to the bottom of the watershed is the perspective that will save the world. And the system I'm going to explain right now was developed about 70 years ago in Australia by this guy named P.A. Yeomans. His system, called the Key Line Plan, focuses on how to merge agriculture, forestry, pastoralism, and water storage in a way that enhances the ecosystem integrity while providing a high yield for farmers. This is a system for how to manage the entire landscape profile. And we start at the top. The top of the system, hilltops, mountaintops, steep slopes, and ridgelines should all be kept in permanent forest. And this is the water catchment zone. So a forest acts like a giant sponge, soaking up water into the bodies of trees and plants and into spongy forest soil. That sponge, soaks up rain, and then slowly releases it down into the rest of the watershed, feeding creeks and streams below. Now trees also intercept fog and bring water from the atmosphere dripping down into hilltop soils. Now at the point where the slope breaks from steeper to more gentle begins what we call the water retention zone. The water retention zone is that highest point in the landscape that you'd want to put water harvesting and water storage structures. So here we find ponds, on contour swales, infiltration basins, or any structure that's actively going to retain water, either storing it for irrigation downslope or soaking it into the ground to build underground reserves. This zone is where we intercept the flow of water and slow it way down. It's also a great place to plant tree crops. So as we move down the landscape, the slopes get more gentle, and that stored water here can be used to grow crops below in the irrigation zone. So the irrigation zone here is cropland, where the majority of what we consider agriculture takes place. There are strong relationships between the irrigation zone and the catchment and retention zones. First, water stored in ponds in the retention zone can be used directly for gravity irrigation of the land below. Second, water that's infiltrated in the catchment forest zones, as well as through the earthworks in the retention zone, creates a water lens underground, where water is seeping through the soil down slope, and in some cases can actually provide sub-irrigation, where crops below are just passively watered by the water seeping down slope. Now, cropland doesn't have to be just a monoculture of annuals or grapevines or pasture. The crops can be a diverse mosaic, and including tree belts within the irrigation zone has a lot of benefits for reducing erosion, windbreaks, supplying organic matter for soils, and adding other yields as well as habitat. So water is now getting checked and slowed at every level down the slope. And the aquifer is getting charged because water isn't just running off in big rain events, but it's being absorbed into the soil at the higher elevations. This is how water tables are built. So by the time we get down to the bottom of the system, water is popping up all over the places, springs, wetlands, and streamside forests, creeks, and rivers. This bottom zone is called the reconstitution zone. 
Now this reconstitution zone can creep up the valleys just like the water retention zone can creep down. Now reconstitution is defined as restoring to a former condition by adding water. So this is where we maximize wetlands and wildlife at the lowest points in the system. The results being that we have healthy waterways and robust wetlands. Water courses are the connective tissues in the landscape and are the most biodiverse and ecologically rich niches. Healthy rivers and streams and wetlands are the results of planning for the whole watershed from the top down. And you can see that with this land use pattern, going from catchment to retention to irrigation to reconstitution, we end up with unbroken tree coverage spanning from the highest to the lowest elevations, meaning the landscape is never fragmented and there's unbroken canopy weaving throughout. And the trees provide plenty of organic matter for making the soil richer with compost and mulch. So if we can just follow this basic pattern, then land, water, wildlife, and agriculture can be harmonious. Mm -hmm.